Welcome to my nightmare. It's no more Mr. Nice Guy as I wanna be elected since school's out for summer and it'll be poison if you don't watch Alice Cooper's appearances in comic books. Coming up next. Before we begin, I want to remind you that if you love comics and pop culture as much as I do, you'll subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to stay informed of upcoming videos. Please share this video as that will help me gain subscribers as well. I also have my own franchises, Adolescent Radioactive Samurai Platypie and Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter. The latter has been picked up by Cutthroat Comics. Check the links below for more details and the link to Dracula Rising, which is available on Amazon. And now... On with the show, this is it. No other rock and roll act, except maybe KISS, which we've already looked at, lends itself to the possibility of a comic book franchise as Alice Cooper does. However, his appearances in the medium have been few and far between, today we'll take a look at what's out there for Alice Cooper in the pages of comic books. From Louis Fiku, review of Marvel Premiere No. 50 says, The single issue has a lack of credits on the splash page, however, the art is from Tom Sutton, with inks by Terry Austin, and a team of writers is attached to the book, Jim Salikrup, Roger Stern, Ed Hannigan, and Alice Cooper himself. The book is set in an asylum that Alice is trapped in, and there are more than a few nods to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. The cover is a homage to the old EC horror comics of the 50s, and the whole comic is based on the Alice Cooper album from the inside. On the splash page, Alice is trying to climb from the window of his cell, as Nurse Rosetta appears in the doorway to stop his attempt. Alice is dragged by the orderlies to see Dr. Fingeroth who feels Alice needs some time in the quiet room. In the darkness of his confinement, Alice breaks the fourth wall to address the reader and explain how he ended up in this situation in the first place. We see Alice picked up by mistake after checking into a clinic to dry up and calm my nerves and ending up in the madness of the asylum. Shock therapy and a haircut later, and Alice is wheeled into the belly of the beast, where we meet the staff and inmates of this crazy hospital that puts Arkham to shame. Tales from the Inside is a weird and wonderful Marvel comic that certainly comes from nowhere and no doubt bamboozled readers of this title. With a twisted tone, mixed with the darkest of humor, the book has more in common with a mad parody than a Marvel title. The art is detailed and sublime, with many jokes hidden in the backgrounds, and the satire is reminiscent of Howard the Duck. This issue from 1979 would lead to future appearances of Alice Cooper in comic form, including an entry from Neil Gaiman, but this first appearance is a true gem. Of course, rock and roll biography comics had to do their own take on this rock icon. From Wikipedia, Alice Cooper, born Vincent Damon Forney or February 4, 1948, is an American rock singer whose career spans over 54 years. With a raspy voice and a stage show that features numerous props and stage illusions, including pyrotechnics, guillotines, electric chairs, fake blood, reptiles, baby dolls, and dueling swords, Cooper is considered by music journalists and appears to be the godfather of shock rock. He is drawn equally from horror films, vaudeville, and garage rock to pioneer a macabre and theatrical brand of rock designed to shock audiences. Originating in Phoenix, Arizona, in 1964, Alice Cooper was originally a band with roots extending back to a band called the Earwigs, consisting of Forney or on vocals and harmonica, Glenn Buxton on lead guitar, and Dennis Dunaway on bass guitar and background vocals. By 1966, Michael Bruce on rhythm guitar joined the three and Neil Smith was added on drums in 1967. The five named the band Alice Cooper, with Alice eventually adopting the latter as his stage pseudonym. They released their 1969 debut album with limited chart success. Breaking out with the 1970 single I'm 18 and the third album Love It To Death, the band reached their commercial peak in 1973 with their sixth studio album, Billion Dollar Babies. After the band broke up, he legally changed his name to Alice Cooper and began a solo career with the 1975 concept album Welcome to My Nightmare. Over his career, Cooper has sold well over 50 million records. Join Bongo and its special guest writers Alice Cooper, Gene Simmons, and Rob Zombie as they take you on a heavy metal, Halloween-inspired rock and roll odyssey of headbanging, heart-pounding, tongue-wagging, dead-raising, nightmare-welcoming frights and frivolity guaranteed to blow your mind. And it doesn't get any better than when extra special guest writer, Pat Boone himself, gets into a metal mood and tells a twisted tale of dastardly demons and righteous redemption. The four monsters of rock are joined by sideman Bill Morrison, C. Scott Morse, Tone Rodriguez, Ty Templeton, and Chris Yambar for the Halloween Jam of the Century. Treat yourself a terrific time of Treehouse-inspired terror and rock the night away. Chapters Bart Simmons, God of Thunder Gene Simmons and Chris Yambar, Flash Tone Rodriguez and Andrew J. P. Poey 
The Legend of Batterface, Alice Cooper and Chris Yambart, Flash Bill Morrison and Ken Wheaton. House of a Thousand Donuts, Rob Zombie and Ty Templeton, Flash Ty Templeton. Scareway to Heaven, Pat Boone and Bill Morrison, Flash Scott Morse. The X-Files' Joe Harris takes on the Prince of Darkness Alice Cooper in his first ongoing comic series. Rock and roll legend Alice Cooper was never a stranger to the mystic and the macabre. His stage shows were the stuff of legend, featuring snakes and pyrotechnics and the invocation of dark themes and darker forces. But while he was a legend in the waking world, few knew his role as the Lord of Nightmares beyond it, where he watched over us while we dreamed, and delivered horrors unto the deserving. Only someone took it all away from him, cast him out of his realm and locked him away. Until now. And if he's going to reclaim his dark throne, he's going to need all the help he can get. Alice Cooper's The Last Temptation is a concept album that was turned into a comic book. Steven is afraid. Afraid of ghost stories, afraid of growing up. Just afraid. That is, until he meets the mysterious showman and his theater of the real. Steven takes a ticket and watches the show on a dare, but getting out of the performance will be harder than he ever imagined. And then Steven learns what it is to be truly afraid. Sandman scribe extraordinaire Neil Gaiman teams up with amazing artist Michael Zuli for the first of the Marvel music comics. In this tale of music and mysticism, developed with Alice and based on his Columbia Sony CD, young Stephen meets the sinister showman, a dealer of hopes and dreams. Cover by Dave McKean. From Ed Fortune, the showman, of course, looks like Alice Cooper and the entire thing is interspersed with snippets of Cooper's songs. Gaiman does his best to wrap a narrative round the concept, but this is pretty much a straight-up ghost story of the kind that most adults will have heard many times before. Despite the two big names on the cover, the real draw here is artist Michael Zuli's detailed and dreamlike artwork. Zuli had worked with Gaiman on The Sandman before this book was created and it's very clear that he's used to the author's style. We get a beautifully rendered and dreamlike world from the artist, one that fits in well with the narrative. Alice Cooper appears in Dynamite Comics, we're doing many cool things with Dynamite, beginning with a new comic series which I am very excited about. I always say that the best thing about being in a comic book is that they draw you with great abs, says Alice Cooper. Artistically, for me there is hardly a better medium. There is so much you can do in the form of a comic that we've never been able to do on stage. It's just a different way of storytelling, and it really has almost limitless possibilities. We're looking forward to stretching the existing boundaries of the comic medium again. We have new stories to tell, but we'll do it with the same theatrical, sinister sensibility that comes with the name Alice Cooper. This is just the beginning. Welcome to my new nightmares. Renowned as the godfather of shock rock, Alice Cooper is an icon of rock and roll with a career spanning five decades. A Detroit native, Cooper has released 26 albums over the course of his illustrious career and maintains a reputation as one of the most theatrical live performers in history, often incorporating elaborate horror movie and vaudeville sensibilities into his stage shows. In addition to his musical career, he is an avid golfer, film actor, restaurateur, and radio DJ. Dynamite and Chaos Comics united to bring us a shocking Alice Cooper tale. It's the ultimate heavy metal crossover as the original shock rocker meets the original death metal comic book universe. Bizarre nightmares are plaguing evil learning, chastity, and purgatory, and though they hate each other's guts, they may have to join the teen monster team called The Chosen to find the one and only Alice Cooper. Co-writer Tim Seeley says, I'm excited to work with my friend Jim Terry on the perfect mashup of our favorite things. Dynamite is a great place to make crossovers, and this one will be pure metal. Raise your devil hand, fiends. Co-writer and artist Jim Terry says, diving headfirst into the chaos universe has been incredible, like being pushed out of a plane into a combat zone filled with gods, nut jobs, and the most gorgeous women you could fathom. I'm doing my best to keep up with it and hopefully kick in a little dramatic flair, as well as Tim and my own particular brand of madness. Add Alice Cooper to the mix and we're hoping to leave fans breathless from action, horror and mind-bending rock and roll surrealism. You can find Alice Cooper in the pages of Blue Water and Tidal Wave comics. Alice Cooper is a man, a band, and an idea that took on a life of its own, a voice for shock and glitter rockers whose influence created stars like Marilyn Manson and Kiss. Behind the paint, the boa constrictors, and the staged executions is a man whose creative energies gave rise to a legend. Half-truth, half-fiction, Alice Cooper defines fame. Written by Michael Frizzle and drawn by Jeffrey Hashem. The cover alone by David A. Frizzle is worth it. That was our look at the rock star Alice Cooper in the pages of comic books. Did you like our show? Do you have a favorite issue featuring Alice? Did we leave any of his appearances out? Let us know what you think in the comments below.
If you like our show please subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for future notifications. Until next time, this is Andrew in for Kevin Gibbon saying live long and prosper, may the force be with you and keep reaching for the stars.